Hey horror fiends, this is Dr. Chris with Dread Central's YouTube page. We take another character from the media, TV, movies, and go over a little bit of their comic book backstory. This one we're doing on probably one of the most famous creatures in horror of all time, and the man who created him, because it's the 200th anniversary of when Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein, or the modern day Prometheus. The novel was published in 1818 but it was written in, tw in 1816. So a lot of uh, news and horror sites are kind of giving it some coverage this year. There'll probably be a couple more articles written in uh, 2018 when we get to the 200th anniversary, which is a, quite a uh, anniversary for this uh, piece of gothic horror classic literature. Now, a lot of people are familiar with the James Wales movie uh, starring Boris Karloff from 1931 which is where a lot of the different comic book interpretations of Frankenstein have come from. There have been hundreds of Frankenstein comic books written. Probably just as many as Dracula. Frankenstein even had his own series from Marvel, which we'll get into in a bit. Way back in the day, Golden Key had their, of course, Frankenstein adaptation. The Frankenstein comic books are so numerous to mention, I'm not going to be able to hit every single one, but I'm going to do the best I can to highlight some of the more popular ones. There have been Frankenstein comic books dating back to World War II. Frankenstein fighting gangsters, and Frankenstein fighting Nazis, and Frankenstein um, fighting all sorts of manner of creatures. Now, when I say Frankenstein, I, I'm mainly talking about the monster. A lot of these comic books will keep saying... Uh, Frankenstein as in they're talking about the monster's name is Frankenstein when Frankenstein is the name of the mad scientist who created the monster. The monster is always just known as the monster. That's why Marvel Comics were always called Frankenstein Monster or the monster of Frankenstein and he had a short-lived series that lasted 18 issues. The comic was worked on Mike Plug, Gary Friedrich, and John Buscema. He would team up with characters such as Spider-Man and the Avengers and She-Hulk, battling the werewolf by night and Dracula. He showed up in an issue of the Invaders, which were retcon World War II tales starring Captain America, the Human Torch, and the Submariner. Eventually going on to uh, join Nick Fury's Howling Commandos, which were comprised of monsters of the Marvel Universe. Hence the name Howling Commandos. Recently, the Frankenstein monster showed up um, in the new iteration of the Howling Commandos, cr recruited by Phil Coulson to take on Dormammu, a mindless plague. Dormammu being the villain of Doctor Strange you might have seen in the most recent movie. One of the more unusual storylines that recently had the monster in it is the Hellfire Club sent an army of Frankenstein clones to attack the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning and were defeated by the X-Men. Ulysses S. Bloodstone, whose daughter, currently Elsa Bloodstone, is running around the Marvel Universe, befriended the monster and allowed him to stay at his mansion. The monster showed up in the Bloodstone miniseries to help Elsa take on Dracula and all sorts of other number of creatures. The monster's currently whereabouts we last saw were during the Howling Commandos. Where he's going to pop up next in the Marvel Universe is yet to be seen, but he's a constant recurring villain hero, kind of good guy, bad guy character used throughout the monster books of the Marvel Universe. Maybe he'll show up at Monsters Unleashed, which is coming out in January, but we've yet to see for sure, so stay tuned for that. DC Comics also has their own version of the Frankenstein monster. This version of the Frankenstein monster was created by Bob Kane for De 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 Detective Comics back in the uh, 1940s. He has been part of the Creature Commandos, Shade, and the Justice League Dark. Shade standing for a Superhuman Advanced Defense Executive a United States military organization that investigates, assesses, and contains paranormal superhuman activity. Briefly, during the New 52, he had his own comic book series, Frankenstein Agents of Shade, unfortunately only lasting about 16 issues, and then he went on to join the, go the Justice League Dark until that book was cancelled. The Frankenstein creatures of the DC Comics and Marvel Comics just tend to appear here and there throughout stories involving supernatural mumbo-jumbo and mystical things, so it's always interesting to see when they're going to pop up next. One cool little tale that Marvel did in involving something with the Frankenstein mythos is the Punisher, Frank Castle, had been killed 
during the Dark Reign storyline by uh, Wolverine's son and was stitched back together by the monsters who live in the underground. Yeah, there's a whole monster a subterranean underground. Maybe we'll get into that more later on in another video, uh, as that's an entire video unto itself. And they stitched him back together and he became Frankencastle. Up until he found the Bloodstone and then was able to turn himself back into the regular Frank Castle. But it made for a really unique storyline through the Punisher uh, ongoing series at the time. It's definitely worth checking out. The Frankencastle collection is, is completed. There have been Elseworld tales involving the Frankenstein mythos with Superman and Batman, Batman Castle of the Bat, and the Superman monster. Of the two, I probably recommend Castle of the Bat a little bit more. In it, Bruce Wayne tries to revive his dead father using the same Frankenstein-style laboratory with electricity that the uh, that Victor Frankenstein did in Mary Shelley's novel. Universal Studios put out a series of self-contained graphic novels based on their different in Universal horror movies, and Frankenstein was one of them. One of the most unusual Frankenstein comic books to come out in the 60s was just simply entitled Frankenstein, and he had a green face, a red shirt, red trunks, and blue kind of speedos underwear on the outside, very really similar to Superman. And it was dubbed the world's newest, greatest, and strangest superhero. Absolutely ridiculous looking, but if you're a collector of Frankenstein, maybe you can hunt down some of the issues. In the 90s, very similar to Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, Hollywood, Universal Studios specifically, wanted to revive the Frankenstein origins, so they did so with the movie starring Kenneth Branagh and Robert De Niro as the creature. Tops did a miniseries based on that movie. They also did the Frankenstein Dracula War, with covers by Mike Mignola, the creator of Hellboy. Speaking of Mike Mignola, four written by Mike uh, is Frankenstein Underground, a book I have not read yet, but the covers alone definitely make me want to pick it up, as it is the creator of Hellboy, and all of his artwork is stupendous every time I see it. Darkstorm Comics put out a comic book tie-in to the movie I, Frankenstein, titled I, Frankenstein Genesis, which are tales within the I, Frankenstein universe. Eros Comics, known for publishing usually uh, very adult steam comics, has forbidden Frankenstein. And then Xenoscope has a rather unusual twist on the Frankenstein uh, mythos with Screwed, about a young girl who's brought back to life with the same kind of laboratory experiment that uh, Victor uses on the monster. Interesting fact by well, about one of the most well-known Marvel characters, the Incredible Hulk, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby designed the Hulk's look off of the Frankenstein creature. Lee said in several interviews that the Hulk's creation was inspired by a combination of the Frankenstein creature and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hence why, originally, the Hulk was supposed to be gray, because the monster is portrayed as usually grayed skin, very death-like looking skin. But unfortunately, due to a color correction at the printing press, the Hulk came out green in the second issue, and has been green ever since, reverting to gray periodically in different stories. But we could do a whole episode about the Hulk again some other time. And last, I want to point out, Mary Shelley's novel, a lot of people I've talked to have said that it's the most unreadable book in the modern day era. And some people argue that, that the, those people are wrong. <clears throat> I think if you really want to check out the novel, try reading it for yourself. If you can't read it, I recommend Frankenstein, the graphic novel. It's a full story in quick modern English, uh, translated in such a way that ge it gives it a more contemporary spin with the words and, and a lot of the backstory. The author on it was uh, Declan Shalave and John Howard did the artwork. Thanks everyone for checking out some recommendations on some Frankenstein comic books. Again, if you've never read the book, go pick up a copy, go check out some of the movies, and check out some of the rest of the videos that we have here on Dread Central's YouTube page, as well as my own show, Dr. Chris's Radio of Horror, Sunday nights into Monday, and my site, www.radiohorror.wordpress.com.